How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and it is Tuesday here on the show, and you know what that means? Got lots to talk about here today. Last night, Monday Night Raw, and as we talked about yesterday, show opened with CM Punk coming out and explaining that he is out of WrestleMania. Tore his triceps at the Royal Rumble and will need months to recover. Actually, talked a lot, a lot about rehab. I, I presume he's getting surgery. The The rumor yesterday was it it was torn off the bone. But one way or the other, he will not be making it to WrestleMania. And they did a big angle involving Drew McIntyre. There's a lot that's changing for WrestleMania, which I think we've talked a lot about, but we can talk more about it here today. So that is, uh, that's the main discussion point today. We've also got tonight the NXT show. This is the go-home show for the PLE, the pay-per-view coming up this Sunday. And we'll go over the full lineup for that show as well as the lineup for the Dynamite show tomorrow. They have just added a John Moxley-Jeff Hardy match. Still just above 1,600 tickets. So uh, they got to move some before tomorrow. But also got SmackDown and Rampage lineups and a bunch of news. WWE stock. We'll talk about that, how it's fallen after everything that went down with Vince McMahon. And uh, it's down quite a bit since that merger. We've got another injury, which actually did not happen at the Royal Rumble. But uh, Kevin Owens was injured going into the Rumble, so we'll tell you about that. SmackDown and Raw commentary teams have changed. And uh, Wade Baird apparently does have a job. He'll be moving to Fridays. And uh, ratings notes. The Collision Show on Saturday, it did go head-to-head with uh, with the Royal Rumble, but my God, the demo that show did, oh my God. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Thank you for coming. Uh, let's enjoy the Lucha Libre class. Holding the rope. 
because the rust could break it. So you can... That helped me to turn my... Grab, twist, and push your, your weight over his body. God, there's vitriol on the chat right now. Can you believe it? Golly. And that's the Twitch chat. That's true. Imagine what YouTube is like right now. Listen, guys, I know the collision went head-to-head -head with the Royal Rumble. I know the Royal Rumble was the most watched PLE since WrestleMania. Hey, listen up, DJ. Hold on. I'm not talking to him. <laughs> a lot of people. Dude, it was a 0.06. 0 0.06. That's the lowest AW demo of all time ever for any show in any time slot. Okay? Ever. Like, that's bad. That, okay? That's not good. I know. I know it went up against the Rumble. But, like, anytime you set an all time, all time yeah. record for any show on any day in any time slot, two o'clock in the afternoon, preemptions, <laughs> like, this is really bad. That's and the that reason. is distressingly low. Yes, that's the reason that it's a story is because it is the all-time low that it's done. It's not we everybody knew it was going to get Why is it a the... story that it's an all-time <laughs> low? That's <laughs> That's a story. If it had point been .09, I wouldn't have said anything. And it's not disingenuous. .08? I don't know where that comes from. I'm, They've I'm gone head to head with this. many PLEs, okay? Yeah. They went to head they went head to head with WrestleMania. That was on a Saturday. Right? Yeah. And look, they've gone with PLEs and college football they've had to face before another stiff competition. This is just, hey, look, whether it's a story tomorrow, it won't be a story tomorrow. Well, actually, in a way, it will be a story tomorrow because obviously we're going to have dynamite ratings, but we know they're going to be significantly higher than, than what took place on Saturday. But it is something to keep an eye on when it comes to that Saturday show and to see how it rebounds and to make sure that it goes back to where it was before this past Saturday, because if it still continues to lag, even though it's not an all-time low, it's something to be concerned about. So it's a story today because it's the all-time low. Is it something that needs to be harped upon? No, but that's why it's an issue in a story. It would be the same way the other way around. Here's the thing. And first off, Collision did start after Mania, so did not go head-to-head -head with Mania. But it will go head-to-head -to -head this year. And yes, it is concerning, okay? I know it went head-to-head -head with the Rumble. It's concerning that it did a .06. It is concerning that tomorrow's Dynamite and Rampage tapings, which last night Dave said they'd moved over 2,000 tickets, actually they haven't. They are now at 1,700. They've added less than 100 tickets since the last time we did an update. They're at 1,700, okay? Now here's the other thing. Forget me. Forget all of you on the chat. I can tell you that those of you that think that there's no story here, it's not that big a deal, the people that are actually talking about this the most are the people in AEW. There have been a lot of discussions over the last couple of weeks. What's going on? What can we do? How can we turn this around? This is not something where people are like on the podcast and on the internet and on Twitter and on chats. This is something that is being discussed very seriously within the company. What can we do? What changes need to be made? No one's sitting there going, well, of course it did a .06 against the Royal Rumble. They're looking at these things exactly the way that I am. So if you're mad at me, you can get mad at Tony and everybody else. If you run a company and your show does a .06 against the Rumble, you're not sitting there just going, well, it's the Rumble. Of course it did poorly. The show could have done a .10 against the Rumble. Could have done a .15, okay? Listen, we had a Raw show a few weeks ago that went head-to-head -head with, like, the biggest game, like, in the history of ever or whatever, and everyone was thinking Raw was going to absolutely die, and it, it, it didn't. 
It could have done much, much worse, game? but it did okay. Collision didn't need to do a .06 against the Royal Rumble. I'm sorry it didn't, okay? It could have done better, but it didn't. And it is being discussed internally. Why is this happening? And the answers are not, well, it's the Rumble. They're thinking about why are ticket sales the way they are? Why yes, are the numbers the way they are? It is what, being discussed. It's not just me. I don't know why everyone's you, mad about this. So what you need to point out also, too, it's not isolated on that specific rating just from Saturday. It is that's the surface today on the deeper, darker well of they are not hot. We don't have stars going on. We don't have enough hot stories right now. We're not doing well as far as live attendance goes on and on and forever and ever amen so again this is all part of one bigger story that is taking place this is just the again the spur of today is it did the lowest number it's ever done in that demo so again that's what they're talking about that's i would assume what you're referring to uh, you know when it comes to what they're talking about today you all right no i was you just i don't understand this this <laughs> I know Collision has been up. I know it's been up a little bit. It's not doing great, okay? Not The AW numbers right now, they're cold across the board. That's just the fact of the matter. Why? What's the problem? That's being discussed by me, by Tony, by people within AW. What's the problem? We can't just bury our head in the sand and go, eh, it's a rumble. This is a problem. A .06 is a problem. I'm sorry. I don't care if it's the Royal Rumble. I want this to do better. I want all wrestling to do better. I'm not going to sit here and say, eh, it's just a Rumble. Like, every show could be doing much better. They could be selling a lot more tickets. Like, ev across the board. It's just the way it is. I got to be Sweating honest. here. I, I don't want all promotions to do better because I don't want XPW to do better at all. There are plenty of promotions I don't want to see do better, Brian. If it bounces back next week, will you walk this back? Bounces back to what? A point eleven? Collision on Saturday should be doing better than a point eleven or a point twelve. It should. It's an A show. It's a Saturday version of Dynamite. It should be doing better. And Dynamite should be doing better. And they think the same thing. They think the same thing. So yeah. Look at where Bouncing back above .06 is not walking back .06. I'm sorry, it's not. No, and they do need to rally that thing back. It's one thing with Rampage being the way it is, and if that disappears into the ether, fine. But the two hours on Saturday, they do have expectations, and Turner does have expectations for that show. And, you know, the fact that is it going to do dynamite numbers every week? No. And at this point, nobody should expect it to. But it's got to go back to being a lot more of a can't miss type of show than it was before football season. Throw punk out of that mix. You have got to get those numbers up again to a more respectable point to where they have been. And I know they've been slowly creeping back up a little bit. That's good. But it, you still have a lot, a lot of work to do. I'm moving on now. God. Can't talk about anything. CM Punk's not going to be at Mania. We talked about this yesterday. Tore his tricep. And uh, he'll be out for a long time. Last time he tore a tricep, it was nine months. About eight or nine months is probably what it's going to be here. Depending on... Uh, I mean, he's a little bit older now. But uh, he's out of Mania. And so now we got to figure out who wrestles Seth Rollins. I think the the easy answer is Drew McIntyre. And I realize we've done that before, but you know what? Something happened. And so you can go back to it with three months build. And I think that Drew McIntyre winning the title at WrestleMania, I mean, everything he said in the story is true. Like, he won that title two weeks after everything shut down, or I think it was two weeks or something like that. Empty building. And he wants to win the title at a gigantic WrestleMania. And they did a segment last night with him and CM Punk. And Punk basically, you know, he said he's going to main event WrestleMania, but he's going to come back for Drew McIntyre. be great if Drew McIntyre was champion. You've got a built-in story right there. You could even build it all the way to next year's WrestleMania. So I think that that's the obvious answer to this. 
but I don't know what they're going to do. Hey, but, is Drew going to be a good guy or a bad guy after WrestleMania? Well, you know, let people pick. Because I'll tell, well, I'll tell you what, Damian Priest with that briefcase. You know, we've been looking at Drew McIntyre, who has been telling the truth, but he has been a heel. And we have, you know, and possibly could he be joining up with Judgment Day, depending on what happens with Damian Priest. So you do have that dynamic there, you know, that either could play itself out at WrestleMania or maybe on the Raw afterwards. It'll be interesting. We'll talk about Drew's contract after the break. Observer Live. That whole series was absolutely ridiculous. So like I just said, I now know that Rob's going back to football. He is keeping it under wraps. So I couldn't, I couldn't say anything about it, right? So uh, we're trying to figure out how to do this spot. I want Rob might have, you know, I can't remember exactly, but he might have told Vince or somebody that, you know, he was going to go back just so they could prepare internally in the company. Uh, anyways, I remember Matt Bloom came up to me and he had just gotten that Matt Bloom, the head coach of NXT, who was always a, a really good friend to me, kind of like a big brother, actually, in addition to being a coach. But he came up to me after the production meeting and he's like, said something along the lines of, oh, Rob's Rob jumping off the top tonight. I was like, what do you mean? And he tells me the idea for the spot. And I was like, no, he's not. Absolutely no, he's not. Are you kidding me? This guy hasn't been trained. He hasn't spent a second inside a ring. You're going to have him jump off the ceiling? Absolutely not. He's like, Mojo, it's all good. We went out and we got all the seven-footers from NXT. We got every tall person on this entire roster, and he's going to have 30 people catching him. He's going to be fine. And I was like, what if he gets excited and overjumps him? What if someone drops him on his head and he breaks his neck and he misses, you know, out on like that's gonna be on me. Like I was like, absolutely not. This is not going to happen. Like I, you know, I didn't even know how high the jump was gonna be at first. I was just like, this is Rob's not going to know what to say. He doesn't know how crazy it is. I have to stand up for my friends. So I'm like talking with Bloom and I was just like really uneasy about it. They talked to Rob and, you know, Rob's trying to figure it out. We're, we're going through it. And then Vince just pops out of nowhere. And he's like, oh, it's super simple. You know, he's like, watch, watch this. And he literally pulls out his money clip, which, by the way, was, was fat. I, he had a lot of cash on him. Hands it to me, gives me his phone. He's like, Rob, it's just like this. And he takes the stairs up. There's a crash pad on the ground. Steps over the rail with absolutely zero hesitation. Just jumps to the floor and takes the back bump on the crash pad. Like, when you think about it, that bump is a thousand times worse than what Rob ended up having to take. Because with those seven footers, by the time they fully extended their arms up, Rob's only fallen like six inches, if that. And then he's got <laughs> 20 people to catch him. Could not have been an easier stunt in the end. But falling all that way onto a crash pad, I mean, yeah, it's a cushion, but you're still falling with a lot of height. And it's not that much give. And it's not like, you know, Vince is 20 years old or something gets back up like it was nothing. He's like, see, it's easy. And I literally looked over at Rob and I was like, well, now you have to do it. Well, at this moment, to the best of my knowledge, Drew McIntyre is not re-signed yet. But uh, have you been watching Drew McIntyre? He's been great. They need to re rehire this guy like yesterday. Well, he's already hired, but they need to re-sign. Re re that rehire, re-sign. Yeah. Because this is the best Drew McIntyre there's ever been. Mm-hmm. And what I, what, if it were me, what I would do is first I would re-sign him for... Millions of dollars. Yes. And then what I would do is I would do the stipulation. And that is title versus WWE career at WrestleMania with Drew McIntyre and Seth. And what you want is his contract status not to leak. 
So that way you go into the match, and he is either going to win the title, in which case you know he is re-signed, or he is not going to win the title, and that's his last match he's out of here. And uh, I think that that would add a lot of intrigue to that match if you can keep quiet his contract status. And then he wins the title, obviously. Can I give you a third CM scenario? CM Punk returns, and then you set up CM Punk and Drew McIntyre for the following year. That's way down the road. I mean, that could be Cody. That's what they CM. do. They've been booking long term. What do you think finish the story is all about? Cody and CM Punk next year. Somebody finishing the story on somebody who finished their story. I mean, you could do it that way. Here's my third scenario, though, on this deal with Drew is he resigns and then loses. Not in a loser leaves town match, but he loses because he screwed over. By the Judgment Day. He's screwed over once again by Damian Priest. If Drew McIntyre is going to be one of the bigger baby faces on that side of the ledger because you don't have uh, Seth Rollins, he's going to have to be out for a while, or you may want to give him time off for a while after WrestleMania. If you're not going to have uh, CM Punk because he's out and you wanted to add to that side of the ledger and you wanted to keep Damian Priest as one of your top bad guys, well, that's a perfect way to do it. Drew really did get screwed again. And, yeah, he could hold the title later on in the year. He could always take it off of, of, of Damian Priest later on or something like that. But you could throw that into the mix, too, for just another reason for people to try to want to get behind Drew McIntyre if you choose to make him a babyface. It's like uh, Jared's house lost internet, so everyone get... Used to looking at Mike's pretty face here. Are you serious? Nonstop for a long time. Now, wait a second. Can you Why get like a it... sock puppet for when I have to say something here? How is it that only... Wait, Jared's house it has lost internet net, so that affects you somehow, but not me? Well, no, he can't switch the camera. Oh. <laughs> the camera's on you right now. <laughs> so we got to wait till he can figure out how to get internet back. Oh, no. Anyway, well, here's why I don't like your idea. Okay. I mean, I, I I will I will accept part of your idea. To me, I'm not one for deserve and everything like that, but Drew deserves to win the title at WrestleMania because everything he said is true. He won that title in an empty freaking building, and he helped carry that place during a horrible period, and he never got that big moment in front of all of the fans. So to me, fine. Have have Damien Priest cash in right after he finally gets his big win at WrestleMania. Let him get his 3, 2, 1, 60,000 people countdown. Hit, oh, hey, there I am. No, you back? Hit okay. that big kick. I had an idea. And, uh, and then, you know, he wins and he gets cashed in on by Damien Priest. Which, by the way, I mean, if Drew's going to remain a heel, then Damien Priest, I presume, is turning babyface at some point down the line. That's Got a it. great way to turn babyface, by cashing in on Drew. And, uh, yeah, you can have Drew win it back at some point if you want to do Drew and CM Punk. Here's the thing with Drew and CM Punk. Drew's line about how I I don't know what I believe in anymore. I'm not a spiritual person, but I prayed that this would happen, and it did. <laughs> it's a hater prayed on a like, downfall. Even MJF gasped. Like, <laughs> God, that one is horrible. Did you see his tweets today? Incredible. All in on this. I love it. I love Drew McIntyre's been fantastic. He's been a fantastic heel in every way. In the ring, he's been fantastic. If you look at this from an old school point of view, I mean, everything about it has been, it's been wonderful. So again, him as a baby face, him as a heel doesn't really matter. He's somebody that WWE is going to have to get back in the fold. Sure, he could go to AEW, and that would be great for a lot of people. might even be great for him, but he's in an, what seems to be a perfect situation right now to really stand out for all of 2024. Kevin Owens worked the Royal Rumble with a fractured foot. Ooh. Fractured his foot January 5th with Santos Escobar on SmackDown and had been doing physical angles and... Got in there and did the match. And ended up being the best match on the show with a guy who's had nine matches. So hopefully he'll have some time to rehab that. And presumably he's going to show up on SmackDown Friday because I think they're going to rematch probably in Australia would be my guess. But we do need to build some big things up for 
WrestleMania as well. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what they do with old Logan Paul. I think we're going to get a Logan Paul Bad Bunny match. I just don't know if it's going to be for the title. You know, I I keep thinking the same thing, although I thought it was going to be later on down the line. I think WrestleMania, though. I mean, WrestleMania, you could do that, but that's also one of those matches that, I mean, you could you could literally put that anywhere, whether that be Saudi Arabia or Australia or Puerto Rico or London. I mean, you really could put that match anywhere and have it get a lot of attention. So it might be one they want to stick in their pocket for now. All right, so we got the new commentary teams for Raw and SmackDown. So Raw is now going to be Michael Cole and uh, and what's his face? Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee. <laughs> That was an excellent at, reporting job I just did right there. At least until football season again. Pat McAfee and Michael Cole are the, quote, permanent Raw announce team. And the SmackDown team will be Corey Graves and Wade Barrett. So Wade Barrett, people were worried about Wade Barrett yesterday when he got bumped out of there. But fact was that, uh, you know, Michael Cole's not doing two shows a week. No. This is a brutal travel schedule and uh and so he basically said on friday it was a one-time deal and it actually was they've got wade baird and Corey graves there so that'll be friday and then we've got our new announced team here on monday with pat mcafee and michael cole actually Which, you know i what? mean i like pat mcafee and all but i mean i'm listening to him and he's got like a lot of exuberance and i guess he's got michael cole to like know what's going on Yes. Pat McAfee has no idea what's going on half the time. That's why I, I kind of like it. He's he got that like, Booker T charm to me sometimes. No, because Booker T knows what's going on at least. Does he? Pat McAfee, well, I mean, he doesn't know what's going on in, like, the world, but he follows the storylines. <laughs> Whereas, like, <laughs> Pat McAfee has no idea what's going on in the storylines. He's like, who's that? <laughs> like, last night, last night, they're, they're, uh, <laughs> something's happening. And actually, this was just for both of them. Something was happening, and, and the referee did something. And Cole mentions, uh, yeah, that referee, whatever. And and McAfee goes, name. And there's a long pause. <laughs> and and Michael Cole goes, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, my God. The big homie. Great. <laughs> You're a great ref, brother. We have no idea who you are. We don't know what well, your name that, is. Well, don't that's know. what they will look. It, WWE can, and that's what they want, right? Doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. You are a nameless, faceless referee who, by the way, for as much as they've pushed that after all of these years, apparently there are going to be actual referees in the WWE 2K24 game. I guess going forward now, we're going to have proper refs back. Whether they have any sort of identity on television, I guess is to be determined. Wick Hawk here says, McAfee said on his show today, he didn't know the names. Thanked Cole for helping him and said he's got a lot of homework to do. Yeah, he had no idea that Shinsuke Nakamura was a heel. Shinsuke Nakamura has been headlining pay-per-views as a heel on and off over the last six months or so. He had no idea. Well, he's been doing college game day. And by the way, I guess with the way things are now, because he was doing SmackDown before, correct? It was him and he was on SmackDown. If that's the case, the issue I think with Saturday mornings was him trying to get to college game day to do that. With this being now on Mondays, I mean, he's got a whole day on Sunday to go and get to wherever Raw is and be, you know, and, and get on the air. So much like Michael Cole, I mean, travel schedule wise, this seems like it's going to turn out to be the best. And I know there's people that don't like Corey and Wade Barrett. I like both of them. And the fact of the matter is they've been looking for the next play by play person. They've had them him there the whole time, and it's Corey Graves. He's the best thing they have on color, and he's probably the best option outside of Michael Cole on play by play, other than look, Vic Joseph, I don't know, you know, I don't know what the status is there with him. But I mean, other than him, again, he Corey Graves is by far the best shot you got. Oh God. Yes, sir. Just... You alright? You need some water? Well, you know, I look at these text messages, but then I get text messages from the real world, and it just throws me off my game. Anyway, the Garcia twins commented on allegations regarding Vince McMahon and their father-in-law, John Laurinaitis. These are the former Bella twins. They wrote, We are shocked and disheartened by recent allegations against members of the WWE 
There's been a lot to process since we found out this past week. Just as you all did, this is something we don't stand for or condone from anyone, no matter who they are. We want all women to feel safe and support in the workplace and in their everyday lives. Their mother is married to Laurinaitis. And, of course, uh, John Laurinaitis is uh, Danielson's stepdad. Ryan, and when we get back from break, I have another really kind of heartbreaking aspect of this story when it comes to Nikki Garcia. But, as I said, we'll get to that when we come back. Back in a moment. Stand by. ever a plan or ever any uh you know concrete real plan to have Gronk wrestle a match in WWE yeah actually um what year was it it was the year we had the the COVID Wrestlemania that was in the performance center 36 yeah so that one Rob was going to come in and we were going to work towards a tag match actually um, and we were going to do this tag match in Boston where he had just, you know, finished playing for the Patriots because SummerSlam was there. And we were kind of talking about who our opponents might be, but we were going to do this match. And, um, you know, I think it was going to end with some fireworks and me turning on him, setting up a one-on-one -on -one match in, in Saudi, actually. And we had, like, this really cool storyline in place. And um, Rob was all in on it. He was ready to go. He was going to make this his, his full-time thing, which uh, I always thought was awesome because I know how much money that would have cost him giving up other opportunities. I know what he would have made here, and I know what he makes on the outside, and he would have lost a ton of money to do this, but he was so jacked up about it. And... Uh, you know, we were sitting there. I want to say it might have been like the week before. Anyways, his phone started blowing up with his agent calling and Tom Brady calling. And we're at, I think it was SmackDown at the time. And Tom told him that he was going back to football, that he was going to the Bucks, and he should consider coming out of retirement. And I think Rob had like $10 million on his contract for that year if he went back and, you know, starting over fresh, you know, fully healed it was kind of a no-brainer for him of course they went on to win the Super Bowl that year so he absolutely made the right decision but had to that Tom Brady not ruined it <laughs> we would have had a real cool storyline for uh, maybe that year All right, go ahead. Well, Nikki Garcia, Nikki Bella, uh, is a advocate and a uh, for the rape, rape and incest national network, the Rain Foundation that was uh, began by Tori Amos, and that has Mick Foley has been one of their uh, celebrity uh, advocates uh, and has been out there and has done fundraising and, and things like that. Well, over the holidays. There was a one of those match the donation challenge things that they had, and Nikki Garcia was the one doing that. And she, you know, has her story about twice in high school about being raped and the trauma from sexual uh, uh, violence and how the how deep those scars go. And the fact that she wasn't, you know, she had to, she was 28 years old by the time that she found a relationship where she actually felt like she could respect herself because of the violations that she had. So for somebody, again, for this to now, 
you know, to be in this situation with these allegations that are against your stepfather, uh, you know, it's a, again, it, I can only imagine how traumatic this is for them. And again, it's just another sad part of this story and just shows you how this is not some little isolated thing that is deserved, you know, with stuff in there to be joked about. It's really, it's it's a horrific, terrible, horrible thing that is going to have ramifications and has had ramifications on people and their loved ones for now years. The uh, TKO stock is back up a little bit here today. It bottomed out yesterday, or at least bottomed out since they, uh, I guess it would have been uh, January 23rd. They were at $89 a share. And then after all this came out, they dropped all the way down to 82.73. And today they're uh, back up again to 85.20. But obviously the big drop was all related to everything involving Vince McMahon stepping down the entire situation so uh kind of easing their way back up right there but it is but as an aside to this and you know not that we can take this aspect of this whole mcmahon thing and the lawsuit and any investigations that are going on out but just looking at this from a stock point of view about that netflix deal the stock was trading at about... Oh, that's why it peaked. Yes, the yeah. Netflix deal, it peaked. The stock it. was trading, I mean, at about 80 bucks a share in the lead-in. It dropped right before it, and then we got the announcement, and it spiked up to about $90 a share before it started falling back down again. So at the end of the day, now that that is done... With the exception of the UFC deal, and then in a couple of years, the possibility of WWE Network being in play, there is nothing else for TKO Group Holdings right now. There is nothing else that is, why would you buy that stock? You know what I mean? And I don't know where it's going to eventually end today now that it's up, you know, f nearly five bucks a share. But now when it comes to TKO, it's like, well, okay. What are you then getting for your money? How is this going to continue to make money for you? How is this something that you want to buy? So I, I guess we'll see. Endeavor Group, that stock, their parent company is also up uh, as well, too. So uh, I guess a, a good day for, for Ari, which, you know, is probably a bad day for humanity. Well, the uh, I would say it's probably going to end up roughly around 80 bucks a share is where it's going to kind of... Because that is where it was. They had the yeah, they, as, as really soon as they nothing. as soon as they you know TKO stock just as soon as it began to exist is that the best term? I mean they were at uh, hundred bucks, hundred dollars, almost hundred and ten yeah. actually. So it's 105. like even even if you get back ten bucks, you know, and from what it was before, and it's sitting at you know eighty five, you know ninety bucks, it's still ten bucks less than it was when it opened up. And again, what are the prospects for that thing to spike? What are the UFC fights on the horizon where you might have massive pay-per-view buys coming in? What is there other than, I guess, the knowledge of a good dividend coming in for you because it's going to consistently make money, but there is nothing... There's nothing good to me and flashy about that stock and considering that everything else that you got going on with that company and some of the ugliness that comes out of both sides of it, eh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see going forward, but again, it just doesn't seem like a stock that somebody would want to jump on and get, but what do I know? Royal Rumble go-home show for SmackDown, 2.5 million viewers, largest since August 25th when they did that Bray Wyatt Terry Funk tribute show. A .71 in 18 to 49, also the highest since that tribute show. So that show did very, very well. And then uh, Rampage, 382 and a .13, which was uh, second highest uh, 18 to 49 of 2024, .13. And as noted, the collision show, 300,000 and a 0.06. The all-time record low. So uh, those are the numbers for this week. Tonight's NXT, and they got a show this weekend. It's Ely Dragunov, Trick Williams face-to-face. -face. 
Noam Dar versus Von Wagner for the Heritage Cup. Lola Weiss, Electra Lopez, Roxanne Perez, and Tatum Paxley. <laughs> I'm looking at that storyline over with. Dusty Rhodes, Tay, Classic Semifinals, Cruz and Joaquin versus Carmelo and Trick. And the alleged goodbye to Chase U is uh, is the deal. So the, the lineup for the PLE this weekend, <laughs> we've got Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin versus whoever wins tonight. And could be Braun Breaker's last night as a main main performer on NXT. You can always go back. Lone wolf dog. My guess is he's uh, he's probably moving up. Although Shawn Michaels is saying, I don't know. I got lots of stuff he can still do down here. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. I could think of a lot of stuff for Braun Breaker to do down there as well. But uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Tony D. Stacks and uh, Adriana versus OTM and Jada Parker. That could be something else. Oh, my. Oba Femi Dragon Lee for the NXT title. Lyra versus Roxanne for the NXT women's title. And Ilya Dragunov versus Trick Williams. Now, a card. I like that. I see that Ilya Dragunov and Trick Williams, you know, that might have been when they were going to pull the trigger and Carmelo screws Trick Williams out of the title, and then we go from there. But after SmackDown on Friday, when, you know, they were beating down old Carmelo... And they hit Trick Williams' music, and that place went nuts. He was way more over than Carmelo. And it was not, it did not go unnoticed within WWE how over Trick Williams was. I think there's a decent chance now that he wins. And once he wins, now Carmelo's really mad. And that's the way the storyline goes. And they build up to the big title match at WrestleMania with Carmelo trying to win the title from him. Which he shouldn't win. He should lose and go to the main roster. He's basically there already. But I think that we could see Trick winning the title at uh, Vengeance Day. So that is coming up. Notes from Raw. The opening segment was CM Punk. Punk's promo was great. They talked about, you know, not getting his WrestleMania main event. He may never get it, he said. May haunt him for the rest of his life. But he said that, you know, there's... This is a flesh wound. There are real fights in this world. Like his friend Chad Gilbert, who had cancer and had a wife and daughter, was always in a good mood, never down about it. And so out comes Drew McIntyre, and he says, you know, I can relate to your buddy Chad. And then he drops the line about, I prayed for this, and it happened. And so they get into a brawl, and Drew gives him the big headbutt, starts stomping on his bad arm, and Sami Zayn runs down, makes the save, and helps Punk to his feet. So, well, there are a few things. Nowadays, they don't they don't they don't say things or do things unless there's a reason for saying it or doing it. And they made a very big point of the fact that Sami Zayn, and I can't even believe this. I mean, maybe somebody can look it up, but they insist it's true. Sami Zayn has never beaten Drew McIntyre ever in a one-on-one -on -one match. Is that true? That's what they said. So, I think that if they do put the title on Drew, you got, you got two big things that you can do. One of them is the CM Punk feud over the title, which uh, one would presume would happen. But your backup is Sami Zayn and Drew McIntyre for the title. With the idea that Sami Zayn has never beaten Drew McIntyre in a singles match before. So I think they've got a plan A and a plan B. Because, quite frankly, I mean, CM Punk tore his tricep in the first match he wrestled. It wasn't the first, he had two house shows. But like the first televised major match he wrestled, he got hurt. And he's going to rehab and everything. But it's not like this was his first injury. He had another torn, torn triceps, he injured his foot. I mean, what else did he have? I think he had others on top of that. But the point is, there's no guarantee that Punk is, is going to come back and be able to have a long run. So you should have a CM Punk plan in case he can come back and, you know, go on. Or you need a plan B. Well, what if he can't? And building up this one with Sami Zayn, I think, is, is a good option.
Well, look, I think Zane should get a championship run this year. It doesn't seem like there's any reason that he shouldn't, you know, depending on what you're going to do with Cody and what brand he's going to be on and, and all that sort of stuff. I mean, if he's going to be, I mean, again, if Drew McIntyre is the baby face and you decide, again, either either way with Damian Priest, you can keep Sami Zayn lodged right into that storyline the same way you can impart Jey Uso or whoever you wanted to also into that storyline as well because you got Jay and, and Drew who still don't like each other. You got Jay and Sammy who have a relationship. You got Jay and Damian Priest who, again, you can, you can always create something there. So, you know, they're in a, a pretty good spot that way. So, you know, I... I'm <laughs> like, I'm looking at you looking at the chat. I don't know where the I didn't see CM Punk get treated that poorly by the fans, considering they gave him a big pop coming out. And they also gave, you know, did they give Punk some what chance? Yes. But they also did the same thing for Drew the same exact way when Drew was on him. They, you know, I, they they it's not like they cheered him beating CM Punk down. They were booing him. So. I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing. I'll tell you who the fans were tough today. on. I'll everything. tell you who they were tough on. Who? Well, first off, they weren't tough on Cody. It's been two years oh, no. now. They have not turned on him yet. No, they have. They not. They love this guy. You deserve a chance. They're going crazy for him. So he's about to say that he's going to challenge Roman Reigns for the title of WrestleMania and finish his story. Let's get it official, he says. But then Seth's music comes out, and Seth says, "I'm going to be real with you." If you choose to fight Roman Reigns, you're making a mistake. I think you should fight me instead. And the crowd broke into no chance. <laughs> no, no. So Seth had to try to come up with some. And Dave said he did like a great job. He lied. I mean, he, he lied. He did a good job trying that to put over the title. That is not the man's I mean, title. It was handed to you. You talk about the guy who's got the silver platter title. That's what you got, buddy. Well, the, the other thing is, I mean, he he tried and <laughs> all, but dusty like title. Cody's story, <laughs> Cody's story originally was, I want the title that my father could never win. So now Seth is going, well, do you really want the title of Hulk Hogan? He goes, you want this, this working man's title that was formed like seven months ago. Your father's title. I was like, brother, come on. You ain't selling it on me. And he didn't Maybe sell it to I the fans either. Back I, I in a want moment. the Observer motion Life. pictures title. Come on. <laughs> what was your reaction to that? Because that's something where I'm almost like, this is crazy that this is happening right now. I'd love to call that a behind the scenes moment, but it wasn't. It was right there wide out in the open. But that is one of my favorite off the wall things to happen in wrestling during during my entire career, mostly because of who who that lady is. Lisa is her name, and she is an absolute badass. I mean, there are a lot of big burly men that are security guards and uh you, you know, protect the wrestlers over there at WWE, but I think every single one of them would agree that Lisa was absolutely the toughest. I mean, she wasn't the biggest by any means, but man, she was not afraid to just dive into something. And hearing her tell that story afterwards about knowing that's Rob Gronkowski and he's eight times her size, but having no hesitation, regardless of who it was, to put her health out of the way and, and dive in there to protect us, just mauling Gronk right from the get-go. Oh, my goodness. What a bet. Like, think about that for a second. Think about who Rob is and what he's capable of and physically what he can do. And, and this small lady just diving in there and jacking him up. That was the funniest thing in my head the whole time. I was like, I can't wait to just destroy Rob later for this about how she jacked him up. But uh, we we let her know that it was kind of, I mean, bringing Rob in was kind of a, a last minute thing. I had heard that I was going to be going over in the Andre and I was super thrilled about that. I think they had kind of built that storyline to that over a course of maybe like a month leading in and, you know, we're trying to think of ways to punch it up. And we had this idea to bring Rob in. Rob 
always wanted to do something with me over at uh, WWE, and this was just the perfect time. So it just made sense. But it was just kind of thrown together last minute, which is crazy for these outside athletes and celebrities. They're not used to just this entire thing, this global spectacle being dumped on their lap with like a half an hour heads up or day up kind of thing. And yeah, we, we, we put it together that day and it was so last second. No one told security. No one told anyone else that was associated with the show. And yeah, then that's what happens. show brian alvarez here wrestling observer live mike server vv also of wrestling observer.com well i should plug the fact that on the brian and Vinny show tonight it is the last day of japan month and we have to figure out what to do next month but if you've been following along february i got some topical ideas for you what's that all the saint valentine's day massacre shows no what's your idea well, I mean, there are great some some great African American professional wrestlers that you could watch. You could do a deep dive on Ron Simmons. You could go into that. You could watch some classic Coco Beware matches. Maybe from how about Ice Saints Train or, Month? Ice Train would be another guy. You because don't think I on. wouldn't do that. Harlem Heat, great tag team matches back in the day. Come on, You've got a lot of people you could choose. Well, tonight it is New Japan Battlefield. January 4, 1994. We'll be watching Jushin Liger versus Tiger Mask. Ooh. Steiners versus Hase and Muto. Ooh, I think that was Koji Kanemoto then, Tiger Mask. And Hogan versus Fujinami. So those three matches will be reviewed tonight. Craig really wanted to review the uh, the Super J Cup, but too many Benoit matches. Well, yeah. Axed. Yeah. Hey, you know what you could actually watch, though, one day is The Road to the Super J Cup, which does not feature Benoit, I don't believe at all, but it does feature Lance Storm in there facing, facing off against, I believe it was Yuji Asioka. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's tonight, the uh, Battlefield Show, January 4, 94, Liger, Tiger Mask, Steiners, Hase, and Muto, and Hogan and Fujinami. Oh, man, Steiners, Hase, and Muto's great, too. God, it's great. And you... uh you can check it out, I believe, on New Japan World. Yeah. So uh, we'll check that out. And then uh, back tomorrow here with more. Lance Storm will also be doing his show tomorrow. So a lot to get into, and uh, that's it. So thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.